The Marvel Cinematic Universe has given fans a lot of info over the last decade. 18 movies in 10 years featuring five Infinity Stones and countless superheroes to keep track of. Wow, you're the Avengers! So, to save you the binge watch, we are going to cram everything you need to know about your favorite heroes and the jewelry they'll soon be fighting over into one handy guide to Avengers Infinity War. To start off, let's go back 10 years to the first movie in the MCU, Iron Man, where we meet billionaire arms dealer Tony Stark. After he's captured and wounded by terrorists, Tony installs a device called an arc reactor in his chest to keep shrapnel from reaching his heart. And because he's a bored billionaire in a cave, he builds a suit of armor to fight injustice around the world. Tony is supported by his long-suffering assistant Pepper Potts, his Air Force buddy James Rhodey Rhodes, his bodyguard Happy Hogan, and his personal AI Jarvis. At your service, sir. Stark defeats his old pal Obadiah Stane, who tries to take over his company using a huge suit of armor, and we're introduced to Phil Coulson, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Tony publicly admits he's Iron Man. I am Iron Man. Then Nick Fury breaks into his house to set up the MCU. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Next up is The Incredible Hulk. You know, the weird uncle you don't invite to Thanksgiving. We meet Dr. Bruce Banner, a scientist who turns into a green monster when he's angry. He's played by Edward Norton in this movie and only this movie. Banner is being pursued by General Thunderbolt Ross, father of his love interest in this movie and only this movie, Betty Ross. Hulk beats up supervillain the Abomination in Harlem and then disappears, and then Tony Stark shows up at the end to further set up the MCU. What if I told you we were putting a team together? That's pretty much all you need to know about this one. Let's move on. Iron Man 2 is most notable for the characters it introduces. Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow and undercover S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, Tony's dad, Howard Stark, and Rhodey 2.0, now played by Don Cheadle. Tony overcomes a life-threatening illness, Rhodey suits up in his own armor as War Machine to help defeat high-tech Mickey Rourke, Sam Rockwell dances, and Tony and Pepper get together. After the credits, we discover that Agent Coulson has found a hammer in the desert, which leads us right into... Thor! Where we travel to the magical realm of Asgard, home of King Odin, his wife Renee Russo, and their two sons, Thor and Loki. Thor gets himself banished to Earth for being an arrogant jerk and is stripped of his magical hammer Mjolnir. He falls in love with skeptical scientist Jane Foster, finds his humanity, and gets his powers back. Thor's brother Loki turns out to be an adopted frost giant, betrays his adopted father, then betrays his real father, then apparently dies, except not really because he's back in the post credit scene and seems very interested in a mysterious blue cube. Also, Hawkeye shows up for like two minutes. Moving on to Captain America the First Avenger. It's the 1940s and a Nazi named Johann Schmidt discovers the same blue cube we saw at the end of the last movie. It's called the Tesseract and it contains the first of what we will later learn are called Infinity Stones, more specifically the blue one, traditionally known as the Space Stone. It's World War II and little rascal Steve Rogers wants nothing more than to be a soldier like his good pal James Bucky Barnes. Enter Tony Stark's dad Howard who's developed super soldier steroids that turn Steve Rogers from a naughty to a hottie. He also gets a nifty shield made from an unbreakable metal called vibranium. The US names him Captain America and sends him around as a glorified mascot until Bucky is captured by Johann Schmidt who reveals himself to be the eternally sunburnt Red Skull. He's not even a real Nazi. He runs his own sinister organization called Hydra. Cap rescues Bucky, but this victory is short-lived. While fighting Red Skull's forces, Bucky dies, and Cap loses his best friend. Captain America and Red Skull have an epic fight that ends in Red Skull getting sucked into the Tesseract. The cube falls into the ocean and is lost, and Cap is forced to crash land Red Skull's bomb-laden plane in the Arctic. Years pass, Howard Stark finds the Tesseract at the bottom of the ocean, and Cap is on ice until he's unfrozen in the present and recruited by Nick Fury to be part of the Avengers, Earth's mightiest heroes. That troublesome Loki is back, and he's been hired by the Other to retrieve the Tesseract in exchange for a massive alien army and dominion over Earth. Not a bad trade. Loki arrives armed with a powerful scepter that can brainwash people and his natural charisma. This is my bargain, you mewling quim. In response, Nick Fury finally assembles the team he's been building for several movies. Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, a newly Mark ruffalo Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, and Hawkeye, who spends half the movie brainwashed by Loki. Typical Hawkeye. Fueled by Loki's murder of Agent Coulson, the Avengers battle him and his alien army in the skies over New York. 
there's mayhem, explosions, and that circle shot of the Avengers that everyone loves. Loki's defeated, Thor takes the Tesseract back to Asgard, Loki's staff is taken by S.H.I.E.L.D., and we finally meet the big bad behind this alien invasion. It's Thanos! Who is this guy? Why did he want the Tesseract so badly? What's his master plan? We'll find out, eventually. Phase 2 kicks off with Iron Man 3, where Tony Stark deals with his PTSD from the big fight in the Avengers. He fights a villain named the Mandarin who turns out not to be Sir Ben Kingsley. I am the Mandarin! Blows up all his Iron Man suits, gets his heart fixed, and puts Bruce Banner to sleep. What's next? Thor The Dark World introduces us to the second Infinity Stone in hiding, the Reality Stone, in the form of a red goo called the Aether, a dark elf named Malekith wants to use it to open up holes in the sky and join the realms or something. It doesn't really matter. The stone is big, it's red, it's powerful, end of story. Thor's mom dies, Loki fake dies for the second time, but really takes Odin's place on the throne of Asgard, and Natalie Portman makes her last appearance to date in the MCU. Thor's buddies take the ether to a guy named the Collector, and we hear the first MCU mention of the words Infinity Stones. The Tesseract is already on Asgard. It is not wise to keep two infinity stones so close together. The Collector seems very interested in catching them all, like some kind of intergalactic Pokemon fanatic. One down, five to go. Captain America the Winter Soldier isn't very worried about infinity stones. Instead, Cap fights to save his brainwashed best friend turned international assassin Bucky Barnes, now known as the Winter Soldier. It's also revealed that Hydra has infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., turning Cap and Black Widow into outlaws. As difficult as this is to accept, Captain America is a fugitive from S.H.I.E.L.D. They fight back with the help of their new friend, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, and Cap allows S.H.I.E.L.D. to be exposed and destroyed. Cap finds out that Bucky killed Tony Stark's dad, Black Widow comes out of the shadows and reveals her identity. Are you sure you're ready for the world to see you? As you really are. Nick Fury survives an assassination attempt and goes into hiding, and Bucky is de-brainwashed and on the run, wanted by both the government and his best friend Cap. But something strange is brewing, and it involves Loki's scepter from the Avengers, now in the hands of Hydra. Meanwhile, out in space, we're introduced to an all-new super team, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Made up of Earthling Peter Quill, Humor Challenge Drax, Tech Whiz Rocket Don't Call Me Raccoon, Sentient Tree Being Groot, and adopted daughter of Thanos turned Assassin Gamora. The Guardians are in possession of an orb containing yet another Infinity Stone, the Power Stone, which they bring to the Collector for some very important Infinity Stone exposition. Before creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity Stone. Long story short, the stones are pretty powerful. The Guardian Stone is promptly stolen by bad guy Ronan the Accuser on behalf of Thanos, but with the help of Thanos' other daughter Nebula, Ronan decides to betray Thanos and use the stone for his own evil deeds. Thanos, I'm coming which turns out to be a big mistake. I was mistaken. The Guardians team up. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. And use the stone against him, leaving Ronan dead, Groot broken down and reborn as a pint-sized Funko Pop, Thanos still without any of his coveted jewelry, and the Infinity Stone in the care of galactic cops, the Nova Corps. All the way back on Earth, it's time for Avengers Age of Ultron, where the Avengers are back together to steal back Loki's scepter from Hydra and eradicate the last Hydra stronghold. In the process, brother and sister Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch escape after the Infinity Stone is used to give them powers, since rights issues with Fox won't allow them to be mutants. Scarlet Witch gives Tony a creepy vision of a possible future franchise where the planet is destroyed, so he and Bruce Banner set out to create something that will protect the entire planet. Except, uh-oh, they accidentally create Ultron, a sinister AI that believes the only way to save the world is to annihilate mankind. There's only one path to peace, the Avengers' extinction. Thor also gets a creepy vision of a future sequel and jets off to see what that was all about. Ultron steals and cracks open Loki's scepter, revealing another Infinity Stone, which he tries to use to build himself an unkillable body made out of vibranium, supplied by bad guy smuggler Ulysses Clow from some place called Wakanda. 
I'm sure we'll never hear of them again. Luckily, the Avengers intervene, steal the body, dump Jarvis's AI into it, add a little Thor lightning, and bing! Out pops the Vision. It's the Mind Stone. It's one of the six Infinity Stones, the greatest power in the universe, unparalleled in its destructive capabilities. The Avengers defeat Ultron, but not before the country of Sokovia is nearly annihilated in the battle. Quicksilver dies, Hulk flies away in a Quinjet to protect his true love, Black Widow. Thor goes into the cosmos to investigate this Infinity Stone business. The Mind Stone is the fourth of the Infinity Stones to show up in the last few years. It's not a coincidence. And Cap and Black Widow ready a new team of Avengers consisting of Scarlet Witch, The Vision, War Machine, and Falcon. Thanos, tired of all this foolishness, decides to take matters into his own hands, literally. Fine. I'll do it myself. Next up is Ant-Man, where we meet Scott Lang, who uses a suit designed by genius Hank Pym and his daughter Hope Van Dyne to shrink to the size of an ant. He meets Falcon. Hi, I'm Scott. And has a lot of cool fight scenes, including a trip to the Quantum Realm microverse. Hope Van Dyne is set up to become her own tiny hero, the Wasp, and we're already running out of time, so that's about all you need to know about this one. Next up, Captain America Civil War reunites us with the Avengers as the government uses the Battle of Sokovia to pass an act requiring regulation and oversight over superhero activities. For the past four years, you've operated with unlimited power and no supervision. That's an arrangement the governments of the world can no longer tolerate. Captain America isn't on board. The safest hands are still our own. But Tony Stark is. We need to be put in check. We meet T'Challa, whose father is murdered in a bomb attack that's pinned on Bucky. T'Challa suits up as Black Panther, and we have a full-blown superhero war. What do we do, Cap? We fight. Through the manipulations of creepy bad guy Helmet Zemo, Cap, Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye, and Ant-Man end up fighting Iron Man, Black Widow, Black Panther, War Machine, Vision, and hey, it's your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Hey everyone. In the ensuing battle, War Machine ends up paralyzed and only Bucky and Cap escape, setting up an epic final showdown when Tony Stark learns that Bucky is the man behind his parents' death. Did you know? Yes. Cap and Iron Man throw down like only two superheroes can. I could do this all day ending with Cap going into exile and freeing his captured teammates. Bucky loses an arm and goes back into cryo sleep in Black Panther's homeland of Wakanda, which we'll see more of very soon. But not before Marvel introduces yet another hero, Dr. Stephen Strange, arrogant surgeon turned humbled mystic after his hands are crippled in a car accident. Dr. Strange ends up being a natural in the mystic arts, able to easily wield the eye of Agamotto a magical artifact powered by the Time Stone, another one of those pesky Infinity Stones. Doctor Strange defeats the mighty Dormammu, master of the Dark Dimension. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. And sets up shop in New York, where he meets the God of Thunder for a nice little mid credit scene that'll pay off later. But first we have to blast off back into space for Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. This movie doesn't really have anything to do with Infinity Stones. We've been hired to stop an interdimensional beast from feeding on those batteries. But hey, it's a fun movie, there's a guy named Taserface, Peter has to fight his living planet father, and Yondu bites the dust. But since we're focused on those sweet, sweet stones... For academic purposes. Let's move on to Spider-Man Homecoming. Also, not really much having to do with Infinity Stones here. Tony Stark mentors young Peter Parker as he struggles to balance being Spider-Man and surviving high school. He fights his girlfriend's dad, the Vulture, turns down a spot on the Avengers roster complete with fancy super suit, and possibly reveals his secret identity to his Aunt May. What the Speaking of WTF, let's make a trippy return to Asgard in Thor Ragnarok. Again, not a whole lot of Infinity Stone action in this movie, but it does put a lot of pieces on the board for Infinity War. Thor's long-lost sister Hela, goddess of death, returns, and her native home of Asgard is the source of her power, forcing Thor to evacuate its citizens and let it get completely annihilated. As long as the foundations are still strong, we can rebuild this place. Nah, those foundations are gone. Sorry. Odin dies, Thor loses his hammer and an eye, the Hulk resurfaces as a gladiator for the Grand Master on the planet Sakaar, and Loki teams up with his brother, the Hulk, the badass warrior Valkyrie, and the all-seeing Heimdall as they head back to Earth on a spaceship. Oh, and a massive ship that almost 100% belongs to Thanos pops up at the end. 
probably looking for the Infinity Stone hidden inside the Tesseract, which Loki seemingly burgled from Asgard's vault shortly before it was destroyed. All of this brings us to Black Panther, the latest entry in the MCU. We're given a formal introduction to Wakanda, home of T'Challa and the source of all the world's vibranium, which gives Wakanda incredibly advanced technology that they've hidden from the rest of the world. Picking up after the events of Civil War, we see T'Challa ascend to the throne of Wakanda, becoming its king and taking the mantle of Black Panther. T'Challa survives an attempt by his long-lost cousin Eric Killmonger to assume the throne and decides to go public and share Wakanda's amazing technology with the rest of the world. We end the movie with a now unfrozen Bucky Barnes, revived and ready to take on the world in Avengers Infinity War. So, where does all this leave us? Thanos is coming to Earth and the Space Stone is more than likely staring him in the face inside the Tesseract. The Power Stone is in the hands of the Nova Corps on Xandar, the Reality Stone was last seen with the Collector on Nowhere, the Mind Stone is embedded in Vision's forehead, the Time Stone is around the neck of Doctor Strange, and the final Infinity Stone, the Soul Stone, has yet to be revealed but will almost certainly pop up in the first half of Avengers Infinity War. Black Widow, Hawkeye, Ant-Man, and Scarlet Witch are in hiding along with Captain America. Bucky's hanging out in Wakanda. Iron Man and Spidey are trading quips in New York. Thor, the Hulk, and their crew are somewhere out in the cosmos along with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Nick Fury is presumably still chilling on Hawkeye's farm since Age of Ultron. War Machine is paralyzed. Vision's doing his Dr. Manhattan thing. Thanos is on the way. And dozens of other background characters are milling around waiting for their close-up. Oh, that is a lot of info. What do you think is going to happen next in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Are you angry that we didn't mention Dr. Samuel Stearns and the fact that they set him up to be the leader, but that's never going to happen because Marvel pretends that that Incredible Hulk movie didn't exist? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Screen Junkies.